नमस्कार माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द टॉपिक सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स एंड आई मस्ट टेल यू दैट इट इल द लास्ट लेक्चर वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द वेरियस इवेंट्स दैट अकर ज्यूरिंग द सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन द फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स एंड वी स्टॉप्ड अप टिल द एम्ब्रियो फॉर्मेशन एंड द सीड फॉर्मेशन बट this chapter won't be complete unless and until we discuss some basic concepts which occur from uh, one plant to the other plant from one time to the other time and these various concepts uh, without discussing them the chapter won't be complete and the various concepts that we are today going to discuss are the parthenocarpy parthenogenesis incompatibility dormancy polyembryony and apomixis let us discuss these one by one so as to understand the variations that occur in the plants apart from the main uh, steps of the sexual reproduction to discuss it to start with we will be discussing the parthenocarpy now what is parthenocarpy this is the phenomena when the fruit is developed without the act of fertilization that is the fertilization don't proceed but still the fruit gets developed it is called as the parthenocarpy now the question arises that in some plants why does parthenocarpy takes place it takes place in banana pineapple grapes etc and they there the parthenocarpy occurs there are certain reasons the first reason is stimulus of pollination that is when the pollination occurs some hormonal changes or some stimulus comes and even without fertilization that change is sufficient enough to uh, cause the formation of the fruit that is the second point the parthenocarpy may be induced by certain hormones and mere stimulus of pollination may bring the hormones into action and the fruit formation may take place now another phenomena is the parthenogenesis dear students parthenogenesis is the formation of embryo directly from the egg cell or from the male gamete that is embryo can even develop from the male gamete another term for it is apogamy which means development of sporophyte that is embryo out of any gametophytic cell without fusion of the gametes and apospore represents the formation of gametophyte from any sporophytic cell parthenogenesis thus is a type of apogamy it occurs in a certain plants like uh, uh, solanum nigrum where the development of the haploid egg cell into embryo has been observed now the question may arise into your mind that what is the difference between parthenogenesis and parthenocarpy because the two terms may appear confusing to you so you must know what are the differences between parthenogenesis and parthenocarpy dear students as you can see in this table that parthenocarpy is the development of fruit without prior fertilization whereas in case of parthenogenesis reproduction from an ovum without fertilization especially as a normal process in some lower plants and it is also seen in case of some animals invertebrates parthenocarpy there the fruit produced uh, does not contain seed because fertilization has not taken place whereas the organisms produced through parthenogenesis are mostly haploid because they are developed from any cell of the gametophyte and hence they are unable to reproduce sexually in parthenocarpy the fruit so developed does not produce the offspring and whereas in case of parthenogenesis offspring which is haploid may 
be produced. Uh, this occurs parthenocarpy it occurs in plants banana pineapple watermelon roses etc whereas parthenogenesis is seen mostly in the insects like lizards in uh, etc but also in the plant solanum nigrum after parthenogenesis and parthenocarpy we must discuss a very important concept occurring in the plants and that is the incompatibility now what is incompatibility as the uh, word indicates it is the inability of the functional male and female gametes it is the that is fun, there are functional male and female gametes are there but still they are not able to affect the fertilization in a particular combination what is what i mean to say by that particular combination that is generally the incompatibility is the integral part of the pollen pistil interaction incompatibility operates between the species when it is called interspecific as well as within the uh, species when it is called as the interspecific in the interspecific fertilization between the gametes which originate from unrelated plants is prevented we, however in intraspecific the incompatibility is there between the related plants and we uh, call it the self incompatibility which appears to be a biochemical reaction but the precise nature of these reactions may not be clearly understood self incompatibility refers to the inability of the plants with functional pollen to set seeds even when uh, when self pollinated or it may be defined as the prevention of the fusion of the fertile or the functional male and female gametes after self pollination now the self pollination does not occur does occur to different degrees in many self incompatible species it generally takes place before cross pollination the post fertilization incompatibility has different physiological mechanism from self incompatibility it is it may be controlled by specific genes and the pollen with a particular allele is inhibited in the pistil carrying some alleles that we shall be we will be discussing just now now general features when the self incompatibility is there what actually occurs it prevents self fertilization and thus encourage cross pollination outcrossing or the allogamy it increases because self pollination is not self uh, uh, fertilization is not there hence it incre it uh, increases the probability of the um, new combinations because cross pollination is there normal seed set does not occur on self pollination but it definitely occurs once the cross pollination has take place now the self incompatibility can occur or can become visible at any stage between pollination to fertilization that is at the time of pollination at the time of embryo sac formation at the time of the pollen tube formation it can occur at any time and as self pollination is not there it reduces homozygosity and increases heterozygosity self incompatibility is often inherited because it is uh maintained by the presence of the particular alleles in a gene in a population of the species on the basis we have divided it into that whether it arises from the gametophyte or the sporophyte we have divided it into gametophytic self incompatibility and sporophytic self incompatibility in the gametophytic self incompatibility it is governed by the genotype of the pollen since pollen is a gametophyte and the uh, main features 
the phenotypic features the stigma is smooth and wet pollen tube inhibition that growth of the pollen tube stops in the style generally in this case the pollen pistil interaction is governed by haploid genome of each male gamete and the diploid genome of the pistil tissue and it is suggested it is observed that the s allele the gene responsible for self incompatibility shows co dominance whereas in case of sporophytic self incompatibility it is governed by the genotype of the pollen producing plant that is since the plant is a sporophyte and that plant determines the incompatibility and visibly phenotypically the stigma is papillate hairy and dry pollen germination tube entry is inhibited on the stigmatic surface as in gametophytic pollen tube starts growing but is inhibited in the style here in sporophytic it is inhibited at the surface of the stigma it does not occur at all the growth of the pollen tube the pollen pistil interaction is governed by the genome of the plant on which the male and the female gametes are produced in contrast to the gametophytic incompatibility where it is determined by the genotype of the gametes it it is observed and suggested that s allele which is responsible for incompatibility that shows dominance now next topic that we will be discussing is the seed dormancy seed dormancy is defined as the state in which the seed fails to germinate under prevailing environmental condition during which normally the seed grows if the seed germinated at the earlier time then the conditions permitted it many would begin growth before the onset of the winter only if they find themselves to be killed by the unfavorable condition the concept of seed dormancy was first introduced by bevelle jd in 1997 it can also be defined as the internal or the innate condition of germination of otherwise normal or the viable seeds even when present under most favorable conditions required for its germination in other words we can say that seed dormancy is the stage between the seed production and the seed germination it may vary from few minutes to several years dormancy is helpful for the seeds to survive in the adverse condition or the climate it may be not needed or unfavorable in certain cases but it is a method of survival for the seed and hence continuance of the species now there are several methods which the farmers or the scientists apply to overcome dormancy if it is too long first is the mechanical sclerification that is mechanically the seed coat is removed it is rubbed by the sand paper or some other treatment is given sometimes the seeds are grown in water and uh, so, sorry soaked in water and they start growing for example the sprouting of the pulses that is making the seeds to overcome the dormancy by soaking in white water next method is acid treatment sometimes the cold stratification a cold treatment is given to the seed and it overcomes the dormancy then sometimes only storing the seed in for some period and it overcomes the dormancy in difficult cases the seeds may have to be treated with some chemicals so that the or, uh, dormancy is over and the seed starts growing after the dormancy we shall be discussing a very important concept and that is the polyembryony now what is polyembryony let us first introduce the concept the occurrence of more than one embryo in the seed is called as the polyembryony 
This phenomena was initially discovered by Lewin Hawk in 1719 in the seeds of orange, where it was first observed. In a seed, many embryos, usually the embryo, usually only one embryo matures and rest degenerate during the course of development. The phenomena of polyembryon is quite prevalent among the gymnosperms, but many species of angiosperms, they have also been seen to exhibit this phenomena, which may be of certain horticultural importance. And now, according to which type of the uh, polyembryon is there, Ernest and Knorf, they have classified the polyembryon into two types. True polyembryony and false polyembryony. What are they? We will just now discuss it. And true polyembryony is again divided into cleavage polyembryony and adventive polyembryony. First, let us come to know what is true polyembryony. The production of embryo within or the projecting into single embryo sac is termed as true polyembryony. I repeat once again, what is true polyembryony? The true polyembryony is the phenomena of the production of the embryos within a single embryo sac. That is called as the true polyembryony. Now, next is the false polyembryony. This type of includes the cases in which two or more embryos are formed as a result of development of more than one embryo sac. The cells of the nucleus may develop embryo sac integuments. They may develop the embryo sac and accordingly more than one embryos will be there. Now true polyembryony as I told you is divided into two types cleavage and uh, adventive polyembryony. Now cleavage polyembryony, what happens here that there is a single embryo sac but more than one embryos arise by a cleavage of the egg or from the synergids or from the antipodals or even sometimes from the endosperms where the their ploidy level may vary. And uh, uh, then the next is the cleavage polyembryony. What is this cleave? Uh, the, after this cleavage polyembryony, what is adventive polyembryony? In this case, the embryos develop directly from the vegetative cell, such as uh, of the ovule, such as nucellus, integument, caliza. As in false embryony, additional embryo sacs develop, but in adventive polyembryony, additional embryos develop from the same ovule. Development of embryo does not involve the production of the embryo sac. It is seen in mango, in citrus and several other plants and is of great horticultural importance. Now, another concept without which the topic won't be complete that is apomixis. Apomixis refers to the development of the seeds without sexual fusion or without the sexual uh, reproduction. Apomixis is the formation of the new individuals through asexual reproduction without involving the formation and fusion of gametes. Femixis is the formation of new individuals through the normal process of sexual reproduction by meiotic formation that is to sexual reproduction we also called as the amphimixis if sexual reproduction is not involved it is called as the apomixis it is the in fact asexual method of reproduction but embryo develops but the fertilization does not take place now uh, let us discuss the differences between apomixis and polyembryony Apomixis is asexual reproduction, whereas the polyembryony formation of more than one embryo from the single fertilized ovum in a single seed. The uh, 
पोलियम्ब्रियोनी द सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन टेक्स प्लेस एंड फर्टिलाइजेशन ऑल्सो अकर्स वेयर एज इन केस ऑफ एपोमिक्स इज नो फर्टिलाइजेशन अकर्स इट डज नॉट इन्वॉल्व द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द सीड्स वेयर एज इन पोल्डी एम्ब्रियोनी बिकॉज मोर एम्ब्रियोज आर देयर द सीड प्रोडक्शन इज देयर एंड वेयर द सीड्स आर ऑफ द इकोनॉमिकल इंपॉर्टेंस देयर द पोल्डी एम्ब्रियोनी इज ऑल्सो एनकरेज्ड बाय द हॉर्टिकल्चरिस्ट the offsprings in case of apomixis the plants are genetically identical to the parents because it is asexual methods whereas the offsprings are not genetically identical because polyembryony is typically a phenomena where more than one embryos develop after the normal course of sexual reproduction so that's all for the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants so my dear students thank you very much uh, now i uh, hope that all of you will definitely uh, go through this chapter in details and next time we shall be discussing the next unit and that is the genetics wish you a early uh, going back to your schools and thank you very much that all that's all